Okay, here I'm gonna look at something we probably take for granted. It's how we breathe. So a in, very important component to us breathing is the diaphragm. Now what the diaphragm is, is actually a dome-shaped muscle uh, and tendon. It plays a vital role in the breathing process. If you can see here, what the diaphragm does, it's kind of this green line here, not a complete accurate uh, depiction, but it's a line of change in volume. So this is a picture of that muscle. And that kind of increasing and changing in volume is what's causing air to come in and air to come out. Breathing is the act of pumping of air in and out of the lungs. So while the diaphragm is completely separate from the lungs, it is affecting the volume of the lungs, which is affecting the air coming in or air leaving. So the inhalation and exhalation process. When we're breathing air in, the diaphragm contracts and flattens. And as you can see here, it's being pushed down, taking our lung volume and increasing it. Uh, this chest cavity expands downwards and also outwards. This creates negative pressure and air comes in. So the expiration or the exhalation process is basically the opposite. The diaphragm is relaxing in this case. Volume of chest cavity is decreasing and the pressure in the lungs is forcing air out. And that is the exhalation process. We could see it represented here when we're looking at the um, Boyle's gas law is a key component here. And we have P equals pressure and V equals volume. So P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Well, what does that kind of look like? Well, when the volume is decreasing, our pressure is increasing. So here we have a constant temperature and we have our pressure increasing when our volume is decreasing. So when we take our set volume there and we're compressing it, the pressure is increasing. So keep in mind, as the volume increases, the pressure decreases, and you have this inverse relationship. As the volume decreases, the pressure will increase. It's not a linear, it's kind of this kind of, um, this exponential scale, um, but you can see overall the pattern is as the volume either increases, the pressure will do the opposite. And here we see that example of that volume decreasing and that pressure increasing. Now the mechanism of breathing in humans, we have typical breath at rest is about half a liter. So it's called your tidal volume. When each breath is completed, the lung still contains a volume of air. So there's about 1.2 liters left behind and that's called the residual volume. Each inhalation adds about 500 milliliters at resting or 3,000 milliliters during exercising, that'd be three liters. Each exhalation removes the same volume as the inhalation added. So what does this kind of relate to? If you compare it to a two liter bottle or 2,000 milliliter soda bottle, this kind of puts this in perspective. Again, your tidal volume is here, and you have your inspiration volume, expiration volume, and then your residual volume. There's still some air in your lungs. You can't exhale um, it all. So this just gives you a little bit of a background on how we go about breathing.